This is a map of Mars created in 16K ultra high resolution. When an elevation map showing differences in height is added, it looks like this. Mars is often thought to be a flat, barren land, but its terrain is far more dynamic than Earth's. So what kind of landscape does Mars have? Based on the 16K map and real images, let's explore the geography of Mars that 90% of people do not know. More than a century before this topographic map was completed, maps of Mars had already been made. For example, this drawing is a map of Mars published in 1877. It was sketched by Italian astronomer Giovanni Scaparelli while observing Mars through a telescope. Scaparelli discovered line patterns on the Martian surface and represented them as linear features. In an era without space probes traveling into deep space or advanced space telescopes, such a map was completed entirely by hand. Inspired by this, American businessman Percival Lowell believed that the linear features were canals built by intelligent beings and produced maps like this. These illustrations show how much people of that time with only limited technology dreamed about Mars. By the end of the 20th century, however, the observation of Mars was no longer done by the human eye, but by unmanned spacecraft. The first detailed maps of Mars were created by Viking 1 and 2, launched in 1975. These two Viking landers, the first to succeed in soft landing on Mars, transmitted a total of 52,663 images. With a resolution of 300M, they mapped about 97% of the Martian surface. This was the first color map of Mars ever seen by humankind. Even with technology from 50 years ago, the Martian surface could be captured with such clarity. But technological progress accelerated even further. In 1996, NASA's Mars Global Surveyor created topographic maps with far higher resolution. This was possible because the orbiter was designed to repeatedly pass over specific locations at the same local time. To measure terrain, the Mars Global Surveyor was equipped with an altimeter that reflected laser beams off the surface. By measuring the time it took for the laser to return, the distance from the orbiter to the ground could be calculated. In addition to terrain, the spacecraft also observed the atmosphere and weather in detail, capturing Mars shrouded in dust storms. Now, let us take a closer look at Martian geography based on the 16K ultra-high resolution map. At first glance, very few people would find this map interesting. That is, because there are no oceans. On Earth, the variously shaped continents floating in the seas are highly visible even from space, but Mars has none of that. To understand Martian geography in depth, an elevation map is necessary. But what is the reference point for Martian elevation? On Earth, the average sea level serves as the baseline, but Mars has no seas. Therefore, this elevation map was created with an invisible reference surface determined by the balance of gravity and rotation set as 0m. Because Mars, like Earth, is constantly rotating, centrifugal force pushes outward. Although both planets are close to spherical in shape, they are slightly flattened. This is why the balance of gravity and rotation is used as the basis for Martian elevation. On the elevation map, brighter colors indicate higher elevations, while darker colors indicate lower ones. The most striking feature is the upper half of the map. Most of the northern hemisphere is shaded blue. If ancient Mars once had an ocean, it would have been a vast body of water covering the northern hemisphere with an average depth of about 4,000 to 5,000 meters. In 2010, a paper was published suggesting that about 3.5 billion years ago, roughly 36% of Mars' surface was covered by ocean. This amount of water corresponds to about 10% of the volume of Earth's oceans today. Considering that Mars is only half the diameter of Earth, this would have been quite a large ocean. A paper published in 2019 pointed to the Lomonosov crater in the northern hemisphere as evidence that Mars once had an ocean. This crater, measuring 120 kilometers across, has broad low rims. Such crater structures are characteristic of impacts occurring in shallow seas. 
The impact is also believed to have generated tsunamis reshaping coastal terrain in a region called Arabia Terra. In fact, traces of water activity have been identified at this location. Today, more scholars believe that over 3 billion years ago, Mars had a wide ocean. Another striking feature is the one place on the continent that lies lower in elevation than the northern hemisphere. This is the Hellas Basin, measuring about 2,300 kilometers in diameter and 7,152 meters deep. It is so immense that it is called a plain, yet it is actually one of the largest impact craters in the solar system. Here's an image showing mysterious formations in the deepest parts of the Hellas Basin. They include layers rich in ice and various sediments. Another view shows surface features with distinctive line patterns. Some researchers suggest that the Hellas Basin was once a lake formed when groundwater flowed in from an ancient sea. While these landforms may be linked to water or ice, the details remain unknown. Because of its extreme depth, landing a spacecraft on the Hellas Basin is said to be extremely difficult. The only probe connected with this location was the Soviet Mars 2, launched over 40 years ago. It did not achieve a stable landing, but instead almost crashed, and communication was lost after impact. To this day, no spacecraft has conducted investigations on the surface of the Hellas Basin. Nevertheless, many features unique to this deepest region of Mars have been discovered. There is no doubt that it is an especially important place for studying the history of water on Mars. Looking at the Martian map, one can see that craters of all sizes cover the surface, not just the Hellas Basin. This is because Mars lacks the forces that constantly resurface the land. Earth also has craters, but they are so few that they are invisible from space. One reason is that most incoming meteoroids burn up in Earth's atmosphere before reaching the ground. Even if they do create craters, erosion by rain and wind, volcanic activity, and the movement of tectonic plates eventually erase them. On most celestial bodies other than Earth, these processes do not exist, so craters formed billions of years ago remain intact. Craters are the most common landforms on rocky planets and are nothing unusual. What deserves attention, however, are the areas with relatively few craters. Mars has several such regions. This suggests that some resurfacing processes have been active there. The phenomenon already confirmed is volcanic activity. Mars has multiple volcanic regions. Among them, the Tharsis region is the largest volcanic area in the solar system, stretching about 3,800 kilometers across and rising about 9 kilometers high. Based on Mars Global Surveyor data, NASA created an animation of the Tharsis region with elevation exaggerated threefold. It may be hard to grasp the scale, but considering Mars's diameter, its size is disproportionately vast. In this footage, there are four mountains so tall that they can't be seen even from space. One of them, Arcea Mons, has the largest caldera on Mars, reaching an elevation of about 20 kilometers and a diameter of approximately 120 kilometers. A caldera is a depression that forms at the summit of a volcano after the magma that accumulated during an eruption drains away. Looking at the image, its immense size is striking. Here is a fantastical view of Arcea Mons emerging through gaps in the clouds just before dawn. The clouds form as the air rises along the slopes of the mountain, expands, and then cools rapidly. The largest volcano in the solar system is Olympus Mons. According to the elevation reference used in this map, its height is about 21.9 kilometers. Measured from the surrounding terrain, it rises approximately 27 kilometers, an astonishing size. Although Olympus Mons is 2.5 times taller than Mount Everest, images show that it has a flattened, squashed shape. Its diameter is around 600 kilometers, almost covering the entirety of France. Because its peak rises so high into space, Mars's weak gravity cannot fully support its massive bulk. As a result, parts of the rim have collapsed under their own weight, spreading outward like landslides. 
In a 2004 study, evidence was found that Olympus Mons erupted approximately 2.4 million years ago. The caldera, seen from directly above, has a complex and distorted structure. This is thought to be the result of repeated collapses after magma flowed during past eruptions. A 2010 paper proposed that these four volcanoes are only part of a massive volcanic structure stretching 7,000 kilometers. Martian volcanoes are believed to be active in cycles lasting hundreds of thousands to millions of years. If an eruption occurs again, the topography of the Tharsis region could be significantly reshaped. The second largest volcanic region after Tharsis is Elysium Planitia. It primarily contains three volcanoes, with Elysium Mons, the tallest volcano in the region, rising 16 kilometers at its center. The surrounding areas of these three volcanoes are lower in elevation, and they may once have formed volcanic islands separate from the continent. In 2018, a NASA rover that landed near Elysium Mons recorded repeated seismic activity underground. The sources were not near the surface, but much deeper, corresponding to the rock layers beneath the crust on Earth. For a long time, the volcano was thought to be inactive, However, these measurements suggest that Mars's interior still retains heat and may be partially active. In particular, the mantle near Elysium Mons may contain magma, providing important clues about the potential for future volcanic activity. Mars may not be a completely dead planet, but could still be faintly alive in geological terms. Near the Tharsis region, scratch-like fractures are visible. On a flat map, they may not be very noticeable, but when combined into a mosaic of 102 images, it becomes clear that this terrain is as large as the giant volcanoes like Olympus Mons. This is Valles Marineris, which stretches about 4,000 kilometers, roughly one-fifth the circumference of the planet at the equator. This animation flies over Valles Marineris using near true color textures, in addition to its length, the canyon is over 200 kilometers wide and 8 to 10 kilometers deep, truly enormous in every dimension. Compared with Earth's Grand Canyon, it is about 9 times longer and 6 times deeper. There is no other canyon in the solar system comparable in scale to Valles Marineris. If a massive ocean once existed in the northern hemisphere, large rivers would likely have flowed into Valles Marineris along the coast. Supporting this idea, large amounts of hydrogen have been detected beneath the canyon, likely in the form of ice. While ice is usually found near the poles, its presence near the equator is a rare and valuable discovery. This 3D image exaggerates the height four times and uses nearly primary colors. During the era when liquid water existed on Mars, Valles Marineris may have been filled with water flowing from left to right in this image. Because of its vast size, many detailed images of the canyon have been captured, some showing terrain shaped by water. How did such a complex canyon form? This highly detailed mosaic image was created from over 500 infrared images. Valles Marineris formed approximately 3.5 billion years ago. Its formation is believed to have been triggered by eruptions of the massive volcanoes in the Tharsis region. The flowing magma caused the ground to uplift, producing faults, cracks, and landslides, which extended into fault zones. The tectonic forces that created this enormous canyon may have been far greater than anything Earth has experienced. While exploring Mars for signs of water, we have not yet visited the most important locations, the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. The North Pole, surrounded by a vast ocean in the past, and the South Pole, located in the center of the continents, differ greatly in elevation. This means that the volume and extent of ice also differ. Like Earth, the Martian poles feature white ice caps called polar caps. Mars's polar caps consist of frozen water and carbon dioxide, or dry ice. This image shows changes in the southern and northern polar caps over the course of a Martian year. Mars experiences seasons similar to Earth, so the caps shrink in warmer temperatures and expand when it is colder. 
This image of the south polar cap was captured in infrared, green, and blue light. The combination of the red Martian surface with ice and dry ice creates a scene reminiscent of an oil painting. Even during the warmest period, estimated temperatures reach only about minus 202 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, permafrost extends for tens of kilometers without ever melting. The northern polar cap is even larger than the southern, with a diameter of roughly 1,000 kilometers. The spiral-shaped lines are deep valleys, appearing dark due to shadows. Here is a zoomed-in image of a particularly large valley cutting across the polar cap. It is a massive ice-dominated canyon about 500 kilometers long, 100 kilometers wide, and 2 kilometers deep. The canyon predates the formation of the polar cap and deepened as new ice layers accumulated around it. This shows ice deposits up to 3.2 kilometers thick accumulated on the northern polar cap. These layers likely formed millions of years ago as the distribution of water ice changed with periodic shifts in Mars' orbit. From a distance, the polar cap appears as a simple white mass, but up close, it is a complex terrain with ice filling labyrinth-like valleys. It is a valuable record of climate changes on Mars over hundreds of thousands to millions of years. The journey to understand Martian geography is far from over. Thanks to orbiters such as Mars Global Surveyor, global maps of Mars are nearly complete. However, less than 1% of the surface has been explored in detail by landers. Mars exploration is still in its infancy. With future missions, our current understanding will continue to be reshaped by new discoveries.